Hello everyone, and today we'll learn that how to use Gaffey uh, to collect tweet data from Twitter and also how to analyze and also visualize the social network on Twitter. Uh, so two years ago, so back in 2021, uh, I have created this video that using Gaffey to collect Twitter data, which use uh, the Twitter API v1.1. And now Twitter has um, the API that is v2 and Gaffey no longer support V1. So now if we want to use Gaffey to collect Twitter data, we have to use V2, which is different from um, my previous video. So that's why I recorded this new one. So to start, uh, we need to install Gaffey, which is a free um, software that works on Windows, Mac, and also Linux. So let's go ahead and also download and also install Gaffey. Uh, just depends on which OS you are using, so install the one that works for your uh, system. So I'm going to use the one that for Windows. Uh, so far, Gaffey is probably the best network analysis tool and also visualization tool. Okay, and I just install Gaffey now. Uh, so Gaffey also requires Java SDK. Uh, so if you don't have Java installed, JDK installed. Uh, you probably need to install one. So the one that I recommend is this one that from AWS. So um, if you don't have a GDK, and you could just go to this website and also download and install this GDK, uh, which is free. Um, okay, so now my Gaffey has been installed successfully. So I'm going to start Gaffey. So I click Finish. All right, uh, so this is Gaffey uh, 0.10.1 window. Uh, so before we collect Twitter data, so we need to install uh, two plugins. The one is used to uh, to uh, collect Twitter data by using the streaming API v2 version, and another one is a circular layout which we are used to visualize the Twitter data. So let's go to Tools and also Plugins, and I go to Available. Sorry, I type it one more time. Uh, so now you can see that is a Twitter stream API importer v2. So now they only have v2 and they don't have v1. So they don't support the v1 anymore. Um, our second um, plugin is called circular layout. Okay, so we're going to install those two uh, plugins. Again, both are free. So I can, I'm going to install circular layout and also Twitter stream importer. Okay, I accept all the lessons. Uh, you also need to restart uh, Gaffey after you install the two uh, plugins. Okay, uh, so now my Twitter, uh, my Gaffey has been restarted. So uh, you can look at here and you can see the Twitter streaming V2 is now available. Uh, so again, the, uh, now the old, we can only uh, collect Twitter by using V2, we can no, no longer use V1. Uh, so that means my Twitter streaming API has, uh, collector has been installed. Uh, to check the layout, so we go to layout and we click the drop down list and we can see circular layout has already been installed. Okay. Uh, so next we're going to provide the credentials uh, for Gaffey so that we are able to collect Twitter data. Okay, uh, so uh, the credentials are, uh, you can apply that uh, from Twitter developer website. So uh, here you can see my Twitter developer portal. So here I have a one, one project, which I have three APIs. And make sure that you have V2 access. Okay, and then you, you can just choose uh, one of the app, uh, and uh, find out the uh, the credentials or what we call it token. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to uh, use this one, uh, bearer token. That one that we need to put that one in the Gaffey's uh, API. So I'm just go ahead and I'll generate a new one and I'm, I'm going to copy that one to my Gaffey API. So generate and I copy that token. Okay, now I open the credentials and I just paste that token. So it's not a, just a single, very long token. All right, 
And now you can just go ahead and also plant a, a, a few tweets. Uh, so first, to have a general idea that how, what kind of tweet data will be collected. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use the sample stream. So I just check the sample stream. And I'm going to collect the entire Twitter network. So uh, you can collect user hashtag, user network, hashtag network, or the other type of network. But here I'm going to uh, collect a few of the random tweets by using the V2 uh, streaming API, and which is a full Twitter network. So I just go ahead and start. So now you can see the it is running. And right here, you will see we have a few nodes. I'm going to uh, stop. Uh, so now you can see I have 1,300 nodes and also 1,600 edges. Okay. Uh, so if you look at our data, and if you look at the nodes, so the nodes can be a single tweet. If that's a single tweet, and you will be able to see the content content of that tweet. It can be a single user, and that will be the username. Uh, if the tweet contains links, so that will be the URL. If the tweet contains hashtags, that will be hashtags. If the tweet contains symbol, that will be symbol. Okay, so those are those nodes. And the edges are just relationships. For example, it can be that one user mentions another user, uh, which it will be a directed network, uh, a, a link. Uh, it can also one user send out a tweet, okay, and also a user reply uh, to another user. Or a tweet has that URL. All the tweet has that hashtag. Uh, all the tweet has a symbol. Okay, so those are kind of those relationships, and those are all directed relationship. So now let's go back to this network. Uh, so let's give it different colors. So for example, if I choose uh, the type of the Twitter and I apply it. So now you can see the user now is in pink, tweet is green, and also the other nodes will be in different colors. And for the edges, and I'm going to also choose tweet type. Okay, so now you can see we have the, the user sent out a tweet, the user mentioned other users. Uh, and also uh, the tweet has a link or hashtag, etc. Okay, uh, so let's use a very simple uh, layout. Okay, and so that make it um, a little bit easier to see the relationship. All right, and I'm also trying to uh, make sure that they are not overlap. All right, uh, so now let's say we zoom in a little bit. And so let's look at the colors for the user. So now we are about to say, okay, so this is one user and that user sent out this tweet. Okay, so there's a direct uh, adage that between this user and also this tweet. And this is another user and this user sent out this tweet and that tweet mentioned this user. So that's why we have this kind of relationship among those users and also tweets. Uh, if we look at uh, this group and we can see that this user sent out this tweet and this tweet contains this URL, so the, uh, the blue one, and also this tweet contains two hashtags. So this is the one hashtag and this is another hashtag. And we can see that this user, this pink one that mentioned this user, uh, this pink user also sent out this tweet that also contains uh, this hashtag and also another hashtag. Okay, so that is how the full Twitter network uh, connected and also uh, organized. So we have the users, we have tweet, we have links, hashtags, and also symbols. Okay, uh, so that is a random uh, uh, streaming API. So we are collecting tweets at randomly. Uh, we didn't specify any uh, keywords. So it's just a random tweet from the uh, Twitter uh, server. So let's say that if we want to be more specific and we want to collect tweets um, 
that contains a specific keyword or that takes that from a specific locations, uh, we are also able to do that. So let's uncheck this sample streaming and let's also delete all the tweets we collected. Uh, so this time that we are going to define those rules that um, say like what kind of keywords uh, will be maintained or where are those tweets are coming from. Uh, so you can see if you want to learn more about those rules and uh, you can go to the Twitter uh, website where they have a very detailed explanation that how to build in those rules and what are those limitations, operators, etc. Uh, so, uh, so you can check this website for more details about the rules. Okay. Uh, so here we are going to first we are going to collect tweets that are talking about the election. So the tag is election, and the value will be that we we want to collect tweets that are talking about that contain the keywords election. And also those tweets also should have hashtags. So it has hashtags. Okay, so those are two rules. The first rule is that the tweet contains the keyword of election. And the second one is that the tweets should contain hashtags. We add that rule to our uh, selection. So now you can see this rule has been added. And here we want to collect uh, a hashtag network, which means that if uh, two hashtags are used in the same tweets, uh, those two hashtags will have a connection with each other. Okay, so now we apply this rule and we're going to collect a hashtag network. So let's click start. And so now you can see that it's running. And hopefully there will be several tweets that are talking about elections. So now we have eight hashtags. Now we have 11. Uh, so let's just keep waiting for more hashtags being collected. Okay, so now I have 62 hashtags. So I'm going to stop that. Okay, um, because I think uh, now I have enough tweets, uh, hashtags. Uh, and if you look at the data, and now you can see uh, the edges, so those are all hashtags. Uh, those are all hashtags from the tweets that contain the keywords of election. Um, but we can also see that those hashtags are not only talking about election, so they also have the other stuff that in that in those tweets. And those edges, so those are just uh, if again those two hashtags are mentioned in the same tweets, and those 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 hashtags will uh, have a connection. All right, and we can also enable the timeline. So if you want, so uh, so if we, for example, if I put the window to be smaller, and now you can see that when those tweets being out, or when those hashtags being collected, uh, so you can have like something like a video. All right, and next we can also do some very simple uh, analysis. So for example, here. Uh, we can calculate the degree. So if you run it, uh, we can see that the average degree is 3.7. That means that on average, uh, each hashtag are mentioned with other three or four hashtags together. Uh, we can also calculate the connected components. So if we run it, and this is an undirected network. So let's calculate that one. And we can see that we have 14 groups or 14 connected components that are identified. All right. Uh, so now let's start to visualize those hashtags. So let's first, let's see, uh, for each hashtag, uh, we want to give the color based on the connected component ID. So which means that if those hashtags are mentioned in the same group or if they are mentioned together, and they will have the same color. So let, let me choose a connect component ID as a color. And the next uh, for the size. So size, I want to choose a degree as a size, which means that if those hashtags are mentioned with more the other hashtags, and they will have a bigger size. 
otherwise uh, they will have a smaller size. So I say minimal size is 10 and the maximum size is 40. So now I hit apply. All right. And so now you can see that I have a lot of purple hashtags and I have the other green hashtags. Okay, uh, next, let's say we are going to choose a layout. So as I said earlier, so I, I prefer using circular layout. Uh, and also I want to order those nodes by their component ID, which means that if they belong to the same component of same group, um, they will be close to each other. Okay, so now we have, let's say, uh, those several groups. So if the hashtag contains the same colors, that means they have been mentioned together a lot. Uh, we can also manually drag those hashtags. So if we choose a hand icon, uh, you can drag those hashtags a little bit. Okay, uh, so which means that you can know that, okay, so which hashtag has been mentioned a lot together. All right. And we can see here we have those uh, three hashtags that I mentioned a lot. Okay, and if you want to know the content like the uh, uh, of those hashtags, so what are they talking about? And you can just enable the label. And we can also make sure that we want to use the size of label to be same size of the node. Okay, uh, so here we can see that we are able to see those uh, the content of the hashtags. Uh, however, we see that uh, they can overlap with each other. So let's say we want to no overlap. Uh, we also want to adjust uh, uh, the label. So label adjust. Okay, uh, so it might be a little bit better, but uh, you can always manually uh, change the layout. Okay, so make sure that they don't overlap with each other. Okay. Uh... All right. Uh, so now we can see basically uh, we can see that there are several groups of the tweets that are talking about um, elections. Uh, so basically we have like say those uh, uh, purple ones. Those are those are hashtags that from the tweet talking about elections. So those are hashtags as we mentioned a lot uh, together. Uh, we also have those green ones. Okay, so those also uh, talking about elections. Uh, so those hashtags has been mentioned a lot together. Uh, we also have those red ones. So those are a bunch of tweets that are talking about elections uh, where we can see what are hashtags that are related. Uh, and also those uh, orange ones. And we also have some uh, hashtags that are not in English, like those tweets, those hashtags that are uh, also from the Twitter talking about elections. Uh, we also have some special characters uh, which cannot be displayed in cafe. Uh, so those are also a group of those tweets, uh, hashtags. All right, uh, so if you think uh, you are happy with this layout, uh, we can go ahead and let's go to preview uh, where you can again choose a different uh, uh, preset, so for example, if, if you want like black background, refresh, okay, and those are the tweets, uh, the hashtag network, and you can also try to export uh, uh, the network as a PDF or PNG or SVG format. Okay, uh, so that is the hashtag network. So let's say that we also want interest in the user network, so we want to see that which users are mentioning the other users. So let's go ahead and also create a new network for the user network. So as we did earlier, so let's select all those nodes and also remove those nodes. And this time we want to collect user, uh, have a user network, so let's choose user network. A user network means that if a Twitter user mention other users or reply other users, so there will be a network. 
And for this network, uh, we are not going to use this rule. So we're going to see another rule that is, we want to see that the user that are in Virginia. So if their bell location is listed, Virginia, or if their bell location is listed in VA. OK, bell location means that on their profile, so if their location is listed as Virginia or VA, we will collect tweets from those users. So let's add that rule, which has been added. And now let's say we want to collect the user network. So let's start. OK, and let's just wait for a few seconds. OK, uh, I'm going to stop here. So you can see for this network, I have uh, 109 users. And we can see this is a direct network. And we see some users are very active. They are mentioning other users. And some users that they have been mentioned a lot by the other users. Uh, if you look at the data, again, this is the user network. So all the nodes are the users. So we can see their username. Uh, those edges are like either they mention other users or they replied to other users or they retweeted other users. Okay, so those are kind of the relationship. Okay, uh, so as we did earlier, so let's also do some calculations. Uh, so for example, in this case, we want to uh, calculate the connect components one more time. So we will use uh, this directing network. And let's also calculate the edging vect centrality. So we want to know that which users are the most influential users. So let's run it. We also want to use that as a direct network. OK. And now we are able to um, visualize the network. So uh, let's see for colors. We also want to give it uh, based on the connect component ID. So let's see connect component ID. And let's choose this uh, color. Let's say apply. Uh, if you don't like those colors, you can just you know uh, choose different colors. Um, and for the size, we are going to use the edge and back centrality. So for smaller ones, we give it ten, and big ones, we give it forty. Okay. And now you can see which users are the most popular ones. Uh, for the edges, uh, color, let's say type. OK, so we know that is that a mention relationship, reply relationship, or retweet relationship. Uh, for the layout, uh, I'm still going to use a circular layout and also connect component ID, okay, which is uh, my personal favorite. And let's also uh, Make sure that it's a, the label is the same size of the node. And let's also adjust the label a little bit. And also no overlap. OK. Uh, so here we can see uh, we have a few groups. Let's see. Let's say this group of people that we have three users, they have very high edge and centralities. And we also have um, this user that mentioned this user a lot because we can see uh, the strong uh, relationship. Or retweet, sorry, retweet that user. And also we can see those three users that have this. Uh, relationship, which is mention, OK? And also those three users, OK? So here we have a group of those four users that they are mentioning uh, each other. And also we also have a group of those four users that they are mentioning each other, OK? And finally, uh, we can see this group user. We have a lot of users that in this group. 
And actually, it turns out that that is because uh, this user uh, mentioned a lot of the other users. Okay, so we can see, yeah, this user mentioned a lot of other users. Uh, so that's why they have uh, they are in the same group. Okay, uh, you can keep doing this one. So I think it's a very interesting and also uh you all learn a lot of those their relationships and if you happen to know any of those users uh, i think that is very interesting to explore their uh interactions online all right um again uh it it actually very hard to have a very great layout that uh not everything is clear to see because in network visualizations it's very hard to to achieve that goal so all right uh, we can also go to preview one more time, uh, preview settings. Uh, so if you want to save their arrows in this preview, uh, you may need to go to default street. Okay, refresh. Uh, if you want to see their, uh, the thickness of the edge, that uh, so you may also rescale that thickness. Okay. Uh, let me change that one to be five. Okay, so that means if they have very strong relationship and you are able to see that uh, the relationship is strong. Okay, and if you zoom in and you will be able to see those arrows. Okay, and you can also play with the other um, attributes. For example, if you think the labels are too big, uh, you can always change the label to be a smaller one, but just don't forget to uh, refresh so that you are able to see the change. Uh, you can also change the background colors, for example, if you like. Um, let's see, dark red one. Okay, and you are able to do that. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep using the white one. All right, uh, and finally, uh, when you are happy with your layout, uh, you can always just. Um, export your layout. Uh, so there are three formats you can export as PDF, PNG, or SVG. Okay, so I'm going to export as a PNG. And now you can see your network has been saved as a PNG file. Okay, which is very nice.